Hello and welcome to another video. Um, I'm making this video because one of my viewers, I don't know if they're subscribed, um, requested that I make um, the derivative, find the derivative of the trig functions, all of them from first principle. I know I already have the sine and the cosine. This is the tangent and I'm going to go into the reciprocal trig functions in the other videos coming, which will be secant, um, cotangent and um, cosecant. Okay, all from first principle from the definition using this definition. So let's quickly get into this since we already know what the definition is. So we know that the derivative of a function is basically defined as this. Okay, it is the limit as h goes to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. So let's run through this proof. It's going to be a short one and um, we'll be good. So the first thing is to go back to our understanding of trig. Remember that tangent is defined as the ratio of sine to cosine. So we're going to rewrite this and say that f prime of x for this definition will be the limit. Okay, the limit as h goes to zero. So instead of me write, I'm going to write tan of x plus h minus tan of x divided by h. That's the definition which we can rewrite actually accurately as the limit as h goes to zero of sine x plus h over cosine x plus h. Okay, that's what we have here. So you replace all the x's with x plus h, but on this side, you're gonna have just sine x over cosine x, okay, divided by h. The rest is algebra. Remember that dif differentiating from first principle is basically algebra. There's almost zero calculus in it. The only calculus in this is the beginning part, the definition and taking limits. So at this point, we just want to simplify this and see how it goes. Now look at some beautiful thing. When you have a complex fraction, that is a fraction within a fraction, and you want to get rid of the fraction that's on top, what you do is look at the two denominators and use these two to multiply each of the terms and things are going to simplify out. So let me write out what I'm about to do here. So we still have the derivative um, f prime of x in this case will be the limit as x goes to zero of this expression which is going to be sine of x plus h over cosine of x plus h minus sine of x over the cosine of x, okay? Multiply, now we're gonna look at the denominators on top. This is cosine x, cosine x plus h. We're gonna use that to multiply. So it's gonna be cosine x plus h, um, cosine x, okay? Those are the two terms under. We're gonna use it to multiply the top and the bottom. So we multiply here, we also multiply, remember this is over h, we we'll also multiply the bottom by the same thing, cosine x plus h and cosine x. Okay, so see what's going to happen. If you take this and multiply this expression, this will cancel this and you have just this left. So what we have is going to be sine x plus h times cosine x. That's what's going to be on top. So this is still the limit as h goes to zero, not x, come on h goes to zero of sine x plus h cosine x. That's what you've got. Now you do the same thing, use this to multiply this. This cosine is going to cancel this cosine and what you have left is these two, which is going to be um, minus cosine x plus h times sine x. Okay, all divided by the product of this and this. So I'm going to write just h times cosine x plus h times cosine x. Okay. Ha. Huh. Now wait, we're just, we're almost done because now I can see what is familiar. Look at this. Do you remember, have you seen this before? Sine a cos b minus cos a sine b. Have you seen this before? 
Yes, this is the formula for sine A minus B. Oh, don't write it there, it doesn't fit. Give me a second. This is how you write sine A minus B. Remember? Okay, so this is exactly what's going on. If you look here, it is sine A cos B minus cos A sine B, which is exactly what you have here. So I can replace all this long expression with just this, just subtract B from A. As you can see, this is the B and this is the A. So I can rewrite this to be equal to the limit as H goes to zero of sine x plus h minus x. Over, uh, over, um, we got h times cosine x plus h, um, cosine x. Okay, so that's done. And this can be further simplified into, because if you take this out, you have just sine h remaining. So this is the limit as h goes to zero of, on top alone, I have sine just h divided by, I have h cosine x plus h, and I have cosine x. Okay, so let's take the final limit. I'm gonna break this into two because I see that I see sine x over h. So I'm gonna write it this way. This is the limit as h goes to zero of sine h over h times, so as long as the function is continuous and these two are also continuous, you can do the, the limit of a product is the product of the limits. And that's what I'm doing here. So this is a limit law. And that's gonna be one over this is going to be just cosine, cosine x plus h, cosine x plus h times cosine x. Okay, let's take the limit. We already know what this limit is. As h goes to zero, the limit of sine h over h is always one. So this is one times, what is this limit? Well, just plug in h equals zero, you'll end up with one over cosine x plus zero is just cosine x times cosine x. Oh, that looks like something we know. That's one over cosine squared x. And what is another name for one over cosine squared x? It's secant squared. That's equal to secant squared. So the derivative of tan x from first principle can be shown to be secant squared x. See you in the next video. Don't stop learning because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.